Hey guys, and welcome back to uh, the continuation of going over my custom build project here. Once again, this is the Zeku Schweifstern. It's a 1144 scale utilizing the HG UC Zeku Eins as a base kit, but then uh, using parts from a lot of other kits on there as well. And just some modding and all of that. And once again, this was a commission. Uh, build so this is not mine as soon as I'm done doing this uh, review session uh, then I need to get this in the mail as soon as possible because my client has been waiting very very patiently as I've been taking quite a long time to complete this but now it's finished and we're ready to continue on with some of the things that come with this kit so um, uh, the easiest thing is just going to be the uh, hands, probably. I've got closed fists on there, but I also made some open hands. So here are those. Uh, they're also in red. I'll try to get them in some better light for you there. You can see they're just in the same color of red, and just like that. So we do also have those. Then I have uh, trigger finger, or holding hands, and those are just permanently affixed to the weapons. So the first one is for the left hand, is permanently fixed to this beam saber. Uh, however, the joint part is not permanently fixed, so I need to switch the joint uh, if I want to use this. Uh, this is basically just the beam saber that comes with the Zeku Eins. The problem is that it's just molded all in this clear blue, so I just had to paint uh, the handle, paint the handle in gray, and then uh, just mask. Uh, the clear blue part, so it does have this beam saber that it can use. And then it does have this kind of small uh, SMG for the other hand, uh, for the right side. Again, you just need to swap the uh, joint part there, the ball joint. This SMG is from a Kotobukiya kit. It's, uh, I can't remember which weapons uh, which number it is in there in the Kotobukiya line, but um, it's really cool. It's really versatile So there's a lot of different options you can do with it. Basically what my uh, client wanted was uh, something very short like this like a pop gun uh, As I drop it and then uh, these are just extra ammo clips here on the top that are uh, basically just going to be feeding into the gun itself. So he wanted to keep the handgun, not any sort of like really long rifle in the hand. He wanted to keep it pretty small. Uh, so this is what we went with for that. I'll show you go I'll show you what these actually look like on the kit uh, here in a minute, but I just want to let's go over those. So pretty simple there. I didn't do any modifying to the gun um, at all. So that's that. Then we have the base. Uh, this base actually comes is the one the base that comes with the old one 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 five hundred fifty scale New Zeal, and I just modified it to work with this. Basically, what I did was use a peg here at the top and then just drilled a hole up underneath there. And the reason that it has this kind of large flat area at the top is because, as I said before, the legs of the Zeko irons are too heavy. So they just fall straight down. So if you want to have it up on the base, you want to have its legs out at all, I needed to make this top of the base like that so that it would forcibly separate the legs. So that's why it's built out like that. Uh, I'll put that up on there in a minute. But uh, here on the bottom, I just added this flat, uh, just a piece of plot plate on the bottom, just there, and then added the Shar figure there. That is the Shar figure from the RG Zaku. So I just paint that up. So it's 1144 scale. Came out pretty well. I think those 1144 scale uh, figures are not easy to paint. They're very small, but I think it came out looking pretty good. So that will be there at his feet. Why don't we go ahead and pop him up on the base now? There we go. Then it can uh, sit on there, and the legs are out to the side instead of straight down. So that just makes it look a little bit more dynamic. So there it is, up on the base. And uh, But of course, as I said, the base is only the beginning of all this stuff going on for this kit. So let's take a look at the next thing. Now if you saw in part one, the mobile suit was missing its back skirt armor. Well that is what this is, this piece, which should be 
fairly recognizable as the back of the new Zeal. Uh, a little dusty on there, sorry about that. Uh, but this is the back of the new Zeal. It's definitely modified quite a bit. When I bring this up a little closer. Basically, the top part, I just added a couple of parts there, a couple of like little vents. Added this little booster on the side, and I'm just now realizing that it's uh, missing it on this side. I, it's in the box. I need to add that on there. I'll put that on in a minute. Uh, but then we've got these. These are the large fuel tanks uh, from the New Zeal there. Just added some boosters on the end. These fuel tanks underneath, uh, these are the arms uh, for like the landing gear arms for the New Zeal. And I just basically repurposed them to hold this extra fuel tank. So he's got uh, two large fuel tanks and then two small ones up underneath there. So those are all going on to the back skirt and basically this is all just attached onto the original Zeku Ein's back skirt. So that's able to plug on just like the original um, because well just like the original it is the original back skirt armor piece. So everything is just basically attached onto there. So give me a second. Put this piece back on here. Uh, but yeah, so I just drilled some holes into the uh, skirt armor, back skirt armor, and then just added those in there. So this is just going to plug in pretty simply onto the back, like this. Alright, so there it is with that uh, very large, huge back skirt there. Uh, but again, as I said, the backpack is uh, the backpack booster is going to be even larger. So that's really only the start of our back heavy problems for this kit. This stand, this base that I've got here on it, it on now, is able to hold the weight of the kit with that back skirt. But I, as I said before, I had to make a second base for the backpack because it was just way too heavy. The other thing, these decals on here fit uh, into that space there remarkably well. Very, very pleased with those uh, decals and how they ended up looking on those boosters. Uh, they fit on there perfectly, I think, so very, very cool. That is that. Now let's move on to some parts on the legs. As I said, I did use um, pretty much all of the parts from the Hitekai Ginkei kits, so that's where these come in. These are parts, uh, one for the left and one for the right. These are parts that are going to attach onto the legs as some extra boosters. Uh, and I can see this one is a little bit bent there at the end, there we go. Um, but basically, these are just some extra pieces. Okay, this is kind of interesting. Here on the underside, this small uh, piece, which is just a main booster and then three small verniers, that's from the inside of the RG Zaku's leg. So um, basically, just took that out and then refit it onto there. The Hitekai Ginke had a small piece that was already like on there, which was able to move. I just kind of cut that and then reattached this, and then had to do some work to attach this um, this thruster bell onto there. Uh, underside, it's not that pretty, but we'll just keep it like that. And you can move it a little bit up and down. And so there's that, and then it's on this arm here, which is able to move a bit as well, and which will be good for when we attach it onto the leg. So um, this little peg just plugs into a hole on the back of the leg here. If you can see that hole there, that's where this is going to plug in. Just something like this. There, now that's, that's on the leg, like that. Uh, and it's able to rotate up and down, and you can of course change the angle like that. And just in case you thought that was all, of course that's not all, there is more for that part. It has uh, some kind of like fins that go off the side of that and basically there's two forms of those. Uh, this is the open form, uh, looks like that, and has some pretty cool detail underneath. 
something that looks akin to like uh, they're actually just supposed to just be flaps on there I believe on the underside uh, but they do sort of look like funnels or like funnel bits so that's pretty cool that's the open form and then there is a closed form as well as well so if you want to just have it um, closed up you can plug that up underneath there or if you want to have it open you can plug that up underneath and that is basically just going to fit onto the part uh, let me plug this onto the other side just to show you this is the part for the other leg this just plugs onto there it's a really really fragile part these parts uh, are super super fragile these are the parts that I'm most scared about breaking but anyway when they plug onto there they look like that in the open form or uh, in the closed form will look something like this so that's uh, when they're closed up will just look like that of course this is going to be on the opposite leg here on this side we'll just plug onto there something like that closed up and should look pretty cool. Right, so that is that, and the last thing that we're going to add to this before moving on to the big backpack is the cannon on this shoulder. So here it is. It's just, uh, as you might recognize it if you've ever <coughs> looked at any uh, Armored Core kits or add-on parts. Uh, this is just a um, kit from, or this is just an add-on weapon from uh, Armored Core. It's pretty cool folding cannon. It's got an arm here that it's on, and then the cannon uh, folds forward like that. And then these uh, arms can be brought up like that. So when it's on the top of the kit, that's what it's look like. It will look like there's a little green in there for the sight. Uh, the little wires on the back are painted in red, and there will be an, a red wire attached in there as well shortly but once that's plugged into that poly cap this is what it's going to look like in basically as it's folded back and I could reposition that in a few different ways uh, it's a little bit wonky to try to get it uh, lined up or positioned in a really good way this arm is actually a little bit long kind of I think it probably would have been better off just getting rid of one of these two pieces and just having it just on one piece rather than two. But at least uh, that gives us a little bit more range of motion if we want to move it any farther than that. Now if we open it up, carefully, uh, <clears throat> then there it is pointing uh, up or we can point it more forward like that. And there we go. As I said, uh, these open up farther, something like that. And then on the back of the rifle, uh, same with on the back of the energy pack on the opposite shoulder, I just added a hole. So here you can see there's a hole on that side and a hole on that side. So there's going to be wire uh, running between those, but it has to go through a part on the, on the main part of the backpack. So I'm not going to put that wire on just yet, uh, but just pointing those out. And of course, 
this is going to weigh down that shoulder armor quite a bit um, but again not really a whole lot I can do about that except for just uh, putting some glue in that shoulder armor piece I'm not sure I'll maybe try to fix it if I can uh, but anyway that is that and now we're finally <laughs> able to take a look at the main booster for the backpack so let me move this guy out of the way because it's quite large so here is the large booster for the backpack as you can see it's mostly made up of the large booster from the Gaplant and then that top part is from the Hitekai Ginkei kit the top of that and then of course those side boosters are from the old XS kit so not the HGUC but the old old 1144 scale um, XS kit that's what those are from uh, those are modified a little bit mostly just on these side flaps I just kind of simplified the shape of those to make them uh, pretty just simple kind of covers added these parts here on the side which are actually the side skirts of the RG Zaku and that's pretty much it uh, it was a little bit complicated getting everything uh, to attach onto there but I think it came out pretty well so that is a look at that uh, I think it definitely looks very cool from the back with all those yellow boosters there it's looking pretty nice and some nice detail up underneath those Hitekai Ginkei parts so that really adds a lot to it I think and uh, it just kind of in a way I guess it looks like uh, like that main booster part can be jettisoned I mean as I said before I wanted it to look so that like the new parts or like experimental parts could be uh, jettison if they need to be or uh, once they're used up so like that large booster once it's used up it could be uh, set free off of there and then it would still be able to use those uh, boosters from the excess so here's a look uh, just down the side of that just got it standing up now just because that's easier way to stand it up just to view it like that because otherwise laying down it's very very long that's the other thing too that once this backpacks on I'm not going to be able to use the rotating base because I also had to use the base that comes with the HGC Gotplant to make a secondary uh, base for that now let me stop that from rotating so I don't accidentally knock it off there please stop there we go thank you uh, here that is and basically uh, this part the base for the HGUC got plant has two parts a part for the mobile suit and a part for the for the large booster but I basically needed to combine those into two because the part for the large booster is very short it's only like that short or something like that but I needed the extra height so I needed to actually use both and then combine them here at the top so just use some plot play and putty it's not really all that clean I'm not sure how well you can see it on the video but it's definitely got a lot of imperfections this was the very last piece I had to make for this kit there's a bunch of putty you can see up underneath but uh, yeah this was something that just needed to be done just so that it can hold up the booster in the back so let's go ahead and connect that and we'll see how it looks okay so it's pretty simple how this plugs in just this part just plugs into that gap that I left in the back of the backpack so that's just gonna plug in there like that and it's pretty secure and then I just need to add this base in the back because now it's extremely back heavy and there we go now that is attached on there and it's finally in its final form and it is very long and I'm trying to be super careful with it because really don't want to break anything at this point alright now I'm going to try to add the wire now I need to fit it through this part here on the back of the backpack and then it goes around up into the back of the this end 
go into the back of here and something like that um, looks okay actually it's not really as thick as I had hoped uh, and the color is a little bit brighter than I hoped as well the color doesn't really match with the dark tone of the kit mm, as much as I would have liked so that's not so good um, but I'll see if I can maybe do something here with that well I decided to scrap that red wire and just go with this uh, actual wire which is like an orange colored wire hope you can see okay not really a huge fan of this one either uh, but I think it does look better than that red wire did uh, anyway that's what that looks like on there it's hard to rotate this kit around because I have to move uh, both the front and back base at the same time but uh, hopefully you guys can kind of see that well enough what I was going for there And just as I was about to finish, I forgot that there are actually two more things that we need to put on here, and that are these uh, missile racks. These are from a uh, Macross uh, weapon set, so these are just going to go on here, just on the side of those excess boosters. They should just plug in just like this. Yes, anyway, there we go. Once those are plugged into those uh, excess boosters, then that's what we come up with. So, yeah. Then we've got a couple extra large missiles there on the backpack. Just because we needed something more on this kit, right? So, that is going to actually be the end of it. So now just a couple more shots now with those missiles and that'll be the end. So thanks guys, we'll see you later.